weaves, braids, protective styles, most likely you need protection from your protective styles because a lot of times there are a lot more damaging and it's not because of the styles but because of your practices. So leave your emotions at the door because we have to have a really simple conversation. Okay, let's get into it. Now, this client has had this install in for about four months and I'm going to break it down, but make sure you click on that bell notification and subscribe here to my channel so you're notified every time I make a new upload, post, whatever. All right. So like I said, this beauty here has had this install in her hair for four months, even though she came to see me about maybe like twice um in this four month period you know four months is never the time that most cosmetologists recommend and again we're gonna have a real real conversation let's be honest it's never ever ever a cosmetologist recommendation in her heart for you to leave your weave in for three to four months but i'm gonna be honest when i was standing behind the chair i had to tell my client something that was realistic for them and the way that their mind works because for me i only want you to have a weave in for one skin cell turnover cycle so that's 28 days again make sure you subscribe bell notification and give this video a thumbs up anytime i say something that you like or dislike i don't know mm -hmm. anyway um so for the most part i would tell my clients that i don't recommend they leave their install in any longer than a month right i would say 30 days but to be honest nobody wanted to hear that and this client that is here is a sweetie oh my god a sweetheart but it doesn't matter even if you shampoo your hair and when i say i got in there i got in there it doesn't matter even when you shampoo your hair you're really just moving the bacteria around you're really just moving the the dead skin down into the braid because let's be honest your hair is braided and i want you to try something just get um some like blonde hair extensions the braiding hair type and braid it up right and then put some hair color or put some dirt on it yeah like dip it in dirt and then wash it in that braid and let it dry and then undo that braid you're gonna see that the dirt is still there but it is trapped within that braid right i may do the experiment live for you guys to be able to see it one day but it's something that i really recommend that you do yourself like the braiding hair is like a couple of dollars try it and just test it out to see become your own guru you don't have to take my word for it right um as this video goes along you guys are going to see um just some of my favorite comments some reviews from the seven day challenge they'll just be up there because i don't want you guys to think that i'm constantly making these videos just because i'm trying to cause an uprising no i'm I'm not trying to do that i'm not trying to start a team natural versus send out movement absolutely not i just need you guys to learn the science of your of the human body become your own guru and stop waiting for somebody else to bring the information to you because it's already out there all right let's get into it back into your handy dandy notebooks right so a lot of people would recommend that i use the seam ripper i never use the seam ripper seam rippers are for seams in in like clothing i'm not dealing with clothing especially for somebody who has had braids in their hair for an extended period of time the shedded hair and some of the new growth they are interlocked with the thread so i need to see exactly what i'm doing and i was able to do that with the shears right so at this point my client's hair is extremely extremely tangled up because as her hair has grown right um we did not use a hairnet she didn't want to use a hairnet so for that reason her hair is extending and going every in which way and she did because we live in vegas like y'all it's 120 something degrees outside and you can imagine what's going on under an insult that's been left in the hair for four months now it seems as if it would be safer because okay like my hair is up and i'm not dealing with it but i need you guys to remember that the longer a weave or anything braids anything is in your head the less protective it becomes because then at, at one point like at the very beginning 
in her first skin cell turnover cycle her hair was being protected in the sense of it was it was able to rest right the way that i prepared the hair before i put the extensions in right the way i prepared the cuticle her hair shaft was protected for this 28 day period but every 28 days the skin cells on your scalp they die and they fall off right so if you have a weave on top of your head those cells are still dying off they just can't be removed right so you the longer you keep your hair in for example this uh beauty here for months that's four skin cell turnover cycle so the 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 flakes and stuff that you see is an accumulation of the dead skin cells that were able to turn over plus a lot of the yeast and bacteria that is in the scalp i know i should have been wearing gloves i know yeah i know but i will say i barbicide everything down whenever i did installs i will uh take downs i only did them on certain clients and i only did them for my very last client because i had to sanitize everything in the room and i'm not being rude or disrespectful i need you guys to check the link in the description box and um check out the video where i teach you all of the different bacteria that live on the human scalp forms of bacteria and yeast right so our main objective when it comes to doing the hair is making sure that you are able to cleanse the scalp you are able to follow the natural skills skin cell turnover cycle right you're able to do all of these things but you're never going to be able to do that if you are constantly clogging the scalp for example most people if you have a weave in your head let's say for a month you think that refreshing the scalp is washing it and then acting the scalp with oil when that is the worst thing you can do because when you shampoo a weave all you do is remove the bacteria from the scalp but there's no way to truly remove it from the braids because the hair is all braided up right but if you were to go ahead and add oil to the scalp what you do is re-energize the bacteria and the yeast that you just removed from the scalp because in the video that i just posted the other day video link in the description box below i let you guys know that the yeast and bacteria's favorite food is oil and sebum so all you do when you oil the scalp after you wash it is re-energize and feed the bacteria that you just removed from the scalp and listen let's this us tap into some common sense this is a colonizing bacteria right so you do a scrub and you remove the colonizing bacteria from the scalp but then you put its favorite food in the scalp which is going to then get on the hair and that's its favorite food so it's going to eat it and it's a colonizing bacteria so you just fed a colonizing bacteria what is it going to do it's going to colonize that's what it does right and so i need you guys to understand that if you have a colonizing bacteria on the hair shaft it's going to weaken the hair shaft this is why so many people will have weaves and hair extensions in the hair and they think that oh because it's been in for four months and they haven't touched their hair when they take the weave out their hair is going to be healthy but you will see in this video that that is not the case because all of the hair and all of the length that you should have retained you are now losing because you kept the weave in too long so now you're losing all of that length and the hair that is naturally shedding those 55 to 100 strands of hair a day right so these are things that I really really want everybody to think about so as I'm taking her braids down, I'm slightly um, detangling, but I need you guys to remember I'm the one who put this install in, which is the only reason that I'm taking it down, but I'm the one who put this install in, and for that reason, right, I know exactly what I'm doing, and her hair is not extremely tangled to begin with because her hair was properly prepared when it went in so even though these are braids that have been in for um 
for about four months it's still extremely easy for me to detangle her hair and i'm not going to be using a whole bunch of oil like you're not going to see oil dripping from my hands or her hair it won't even be noticeable to you just like it's not now this entire time that i've been taking her braids out i've been going um, in my apron and there is a small bottle of hemp seed oil which is the only oil that i use when i'm detangling hair or removing weaves and i squirt a little bit of it on my hand and emulsify it and then i just keep going i only add enough oil to coat my fingers not to coat her scalp her hair should not be drenched in a oil your hair should not be drenched in a butter oils and butters and all hair products are tools and you should never see the evidence of the tool with the naked eye right a oil or a serum or a butter is a tool that is supposed to make whatever style that you did effortless right you're supposed to look like you woke up like that so let's talk about it a little bit when we are leaving weaves and extensions in our hair for a long period of time what we are allowing is a build up of yeast bacteria and dead hair cells and the mixture of this right this is a, a, a yeast and bacteria soup this is the perfect place for yeast and bacteria to grow and the longer you leave a weave in your head like i was talking about before as it pertains to the dead skin coming up and the bacteria being removed in the shampoo but you energizing it by oiling the scalp this is what it looks like even though it feels good for a minute it slowly builds it's slowly slowly builds and then the inflammation begins i need you to remember surgery dermatitis is the end result but what you're looking at right now is inflammation right but then before that there was a trigger the trigger was the oil what you are looking at right now is the inflammation that leads to what is known as cerberic dermatitis or psoriasis or dandruff ask yourself why the majority of black women have dandruff it is not normal but they everybody thinks that it is a normal thing because the generational habits that we have have not changed so we'll say oh this form of alopecia is hereditary it runs in my family no it is not hereditary the habits that you are passing on are generational and these generational habits lead to the same form of acne the same for wears weaves and extensions and the truth is the reason that a cosmetologist will say oh okay you can leave it in for four to six months is let's be honest anytime i've ever told my clients i can count on one uh yeah really on one hand how many clients just say okay i won't leave it in past past 30 days the majority of women look at me like i'm crazy because you attach the amount of money that you spend to the amount of time that your hair should be in this is what the skin cell turnover cycle looks like at the end of a 28 day period the dead skin cells fall off and then the brand new ones make their way up but if you've had a weave in your head for four months this never happens right and so the new hair that wants to come through the pore because remember you have the pore and then the hair follicle below but if you have layers and layers and layers of dead skin you don't allow to turn over hair can never poke out of the pore the hair is coming out of the follicle and through the pore so if you have layers of dead skin there the sebum can never come out through the pores so that's why you have dry scalp most women who oil the scalp have really really dry scalp and the more you oil it the drier it gets so these are things that I want you to think about. So when you see a weave that has been left in for a very long period of time that has not been released, this is the why. And I really want you guys to see that, right? So next up, like I said, as I am detangling her hair, the only thing that I am using is the oil that is on my hands. I am not drenching her hair in oil because then I make my job harder. Why would I multiply a colonizing bacteria before I remove it? That makes no sense. I'm just making it easier for myself, right? But when you leave your hair in for long periods of time, those are the types of hair shaft disorders that end up 
being created and this is where hair shaft disorders start because at this point you're like oh my god it's so hard to get through my hair i need some water or i need some conditioner and that is the single worst thing you can do and i'm gonna prove it to you in a second but um in this video i really want you to leave a comment whenever you get to a place in this video where you feel like you can really relate or understand what i'm saying i need you to remember that when you know better you do better and if you had never been to school for anything like this then there's no reason for you to know if you haven't been studying the human body there's no reason for you to know this but most people would tell you to detangle with conditioner and not oil and let me tell you why that makes no sense right i'm gonna visually show you conditioner actually is made with oil this is what you are deep conditioning your hair with or detangling your hair with it is water emulsified wax right okay okay and then they melt this emulsifying wax in water you take it out right and then you go ahead and make sure it is completely mixed thoroughly then you're going to put it back in the oven if the oven or the microwave just until you get the right consistency right and then you go ahead blend it out for it to get to the type of consistency you want then you add your additive so look at the very small amounts of butter that she's added do you see how like y'all most of y'all add 10 times that amount of butter in your hair now look at this i want y'all to pay attention to the very small amount of additives that they were using this is how shampoos and conditioners are made look at this very very small amount of these additives and these oils and this is what's causing the slip you're getting the slip from that very very small amount of oil now this is for the scent and to keep it from going rancid do you see the very small amount of oil listen now imagine all of the, the amount of oils and butters that y'all put in your head opposed to the amount of oil and butter that she just used to make this conditioner y'all when y'all see a conditioner to say with coconut oil with aragon oil that's the very small amount that they're putting in so that's what's giving it the slip not the wax that they melted down with the water i really really need you guys to picture this in your head look at the amount that she made with that very very small amount and then think about the amount of oils and butters you add to the scalp yeah so the thing that gave the conditioner the slip was not the emulsifying wax emulsifying wax and water on your hair itself is going to feel horrible the things that gave the hair the slip were the oils so this is why i have oil all over my hands as i am detangling her hair and combing through her hair i am putting a little bit of oil not on her scalp but on the base of her root to break up those pockets right to break up those pockets of dead skin and um you know shed hair that has slightly tried to mat up now if you just go and wet the hair what you do you break the hydrogen bond and the hair gets paralyzed so it becomes virtually impossible to comb the hair out without breakage at this point with me using oil i am separating the hair that has shed from her hair that is still attached to the follicle and these are things that are really 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 important so i hope that it is making sense to us to the people in the family in the house i hope it makes sense right so yeah we are going to keep going around her whole entire head this part is pretty self-explanatory right and at this point i am making sure that i am also um getting as much of the things that i can see myself up through the base of her scalp right and i don't mean scraping scraping is one of the worst things that you can do now to detox her scalp the very first thing that i am going to do is completely saturate her hair with water like i am going to allow the water to soften up the damp skin on her scalp 
skin after the water softens up the dead skin on her scalp i am then going to follow up with a scalp scrub the scalp scrub is i look at a scalp scrub and a clarifying shampoo like a broom and a dustpan right so the the dust the scrub is like the the broom right it's sweeping up all of the dead skin right it's getting all of everything all the dirt and gook off the floor and then the clarifying shampoo is the dustpan that removes everything so that is what we are doing right now but in this video i'm also using an additional uh dandruff shampoo from camera i've loved it forever i've always used it so i'll be leaving all of my recommended products here um on the screen so check the lower left hand corner of this video and also check the link in the description box for my amazon storefront just so you can head over there and check it out you know what i mean so i'll let you guys see in a video um previously again about the whole skin cell turnover cycle i broke everything down so make sure you go check it out in the description box but you guys as i am doing this shampoo i additionally i did not add every shampoo that i did to her head i did not add every last one <laughs> but um i gave you the gist of it and i did shampoo her hair one more time after the one that you saw that you're looking at now in this video okay but we did end up getting everything the little piece just by her ear i got that I got it, mind your business, okay? So, you know, I hope that this video um, was a little bit informative to you. I hope that this video helped you guys to kind of see some of the patterns that we follow. And I hope that it was something that made it a little easier for you guys to recognize some of the patterns and how some of the patterns that we follow end up leading us all to the same place because at the end of the day, if you are allowing your body to follow its natural cycles then you're able to retain the length most of the reason why most women with naturally curly hair are not able to retain length is because we think that we think that sebum not being able to travel down the hair shaft because our hair is curly literally means like it's literally getting stuck and that's not true if you simply do all of the things that team natural told you to stop doing it'll be easy like if you just simply comb your hair it will remove all of the dead skin it'll help you remove the dead skin from your scalp so you don't have a super big buildup it will help you move the sebum from your roots down your hair shaft and if sebum is on your hair sebum is the thing that your body produces to fortify your hair shaft and it creates a strong wrong and durable hair shaft right your hair is a fiber and your hair is a fiber made of keratin and the keratin is made by the microbiome in your gut biotin that makes your hair skin and nails is produced in your gut so if you have the proper diet right and the proper patterns and if you are not wearing your hair in a style that creates a bunch of tension then you will be good so even when you look at her hair here her she doesn't have heat damage or anything like that but because her hair shaft has been weighed down for so long it is not as thick and as fortified as it should be and what you're noticing now is not that her ends are so thin it's that her new growth the the new hair that she has at her roots is so much uh denser and thicker than the hair at her ends so you can visually see the difference right so these are things that i really want all of us to think about these are things that i want us to all take into consideration whenever it comes to wearing our hair in certain protective styles for long periods of time when uh, again i know i keep saying it but when your cosmetologist is telling you like okay you know you can wear your hair like this for three months then 
not saying it because it's healthy take a screenshot of all of the ulterior shaft disorders please because i need you guys to understand that the majority of the time it is not that oh your hair isn't growing it is because you are allowing bacteria to overgrow in the scalp and that bacteria is weakening the hair shaft it's true and if you have an overgrowth of a colonizing bacteria in the scalp and on the hair shaft then the first thing that you're going to notice is dry scalp why the colonizing bacteria's favorite food is sebum so before it can ever touch your hair it's getting eaten plus you're covering your hair in products too so these are things that i really want you guys to all take into consideration like be your own scientist get you a notebook and sit down there and really really just think about all of these things and like let common sense do it for you you don't need a degree or a diploma to just draw these lines right so again throughout this video i have been um putting up on the screen different people who are on my channel get things out of watching my content so if you are a person who ever gets anything from my channel and from watching my videos it means everything to me i read everybody's comments and even if i just give you a heart you know i see you and i appreciate you so much because i've been doing this for so long and it does mean a lot that so many of you are starting to pay attention but i hope that me sharing my older videos can show you guys what I've been talking about all of this time because again if her hair wasn't left in as long we would have like her ends would be so dense so thick we would have amazing length retention but she has now developed a hair shaft disorder and if you look at her scalp you can see that she has a little thin spot but this is because she let the bacteria colonize right so I was still behind the chair at the time so um I would love to say that I was able to give her a pattern and a routine, but I was not. I was just taking this weave out and then she was about to go get braids because it was the summertime. So, yeah, this was uh, basically my job. And all I could do was just tell them my opinion and hope that they listened and I would be the fix it girl when they went to go do something else. And by the time I saw her next, the next time I saw her, I was retired because this was the last studio that I was in before I decided that I didn't want to do here anymore. Right. But um, at this point, um, like I said, this was the time that I saw her before I retired and when I saw her again she had a bigger ball spot in the middle of her head I do still have the video where I went ahead and removed well no, not removed uh gave her a haircut I cut her hair in a bob to like hide the breakage it's literally the same exact thing same exact thing and like I said it was once I retired but she's such a sweetheart and I'm pretty sure hopefully at this point she's you know changed her habits and things of that nature but again this video is six years old yeah <laughs> no five years old this video is like five or five or six years old and so just to know that this video is five or six years old and the things that were beginning to well not beginning but the things that were taking place then that caused me to leave the industry are still going on right now so that's why when I say leave the industry I mean like I left the industry as it pertains to being like they're the one with my hands on in people's heads because it was just it was just too much uh the the people that you guys see here on my channel are not the people that irritated me enough to make me say you know what I'm done people that came and sat in my cha in my chair that got on my nerves I never took my camera out to film them so if I'm doing 10 to 13 people a day I may be filming five people, five to six people out of that day because the either either the other people irritated me and I wasn't trying to see them because they weren't listening and it wasn't going to be filmable or or they didn't want to be filmed they didn't want you guys to see what they hair look like like women who come in without combing their hair and they haven't combed their hair in six months they don't want to be on camera they don't want me filming them and the first time they comb in their hair in four months is when i do do it absolutely not so that's why across social media it looks like 
cosmetologists are just mean and evil it's like no cosmetologists like me either left the industry or they're behind like a paywall meaning like you have to book a consultation to sit in a chair excuse me you're not gonna um hear about them from like your baby cousin sister-in-law cousin tracy mimi or your daddy's side with the clip foot like you it won't be like that like you'll have to find her the same way that you'll find a really good doctor through you really sitting down taking your time and knowing how to study the market let me know really quick in the comments and whether or not you want me to do a video specifically on how to find a licensed cosmetologist in your area because I will do that because I think that it is something that is really really needed because it's something that we do not understand how to do in any way shape or form and because we don't understand how to do it and everybody kind of does it by just going on google or or and typing in black hair salon then and the first thing that you do is go to the shop that you see and say hey can somebody do my hair and then most likely if they just sit in there then y'all see barbershop if they just sit in there and they don't got no clients it's for a reason baby you don't walk in and let the girl who's sitting there not doing nobody here do your hair baby and then blame everybody in america that went to cosmetology school because you let little mimi that don't nobody uh book do your hair that ain't our fault you feel me so that's why i want you guys to let me know if you want me to do a full video on how to book a cosmetologist because i already have the screen recordings in my phone literally it took me a couple of not even a full minute to find about four bomb cosmetologists in four different states so if y'all want to see that let me know but it takes a minute to put together videos like that so i don't want to do it if you guys don't want to see it right right okay okay so on the screen again i hope that you guys are reading the comments that are on the screen and i hope that you see yourself where you can relate to or at least have empathy for some of the women that you can see i again do not make these videos like send out versus team natural no i am no longer behind the chair doing hair with my hands but i am still very very deep in the industry probably more now than i was before right and so even though I have the seven day hair growth challenge where I break things down in detail, I do still want to come and give like little bits and pieces of information here for you guys. On the seven day challenge, I'll give you an exact pattern, the exact routine that you would follow if you were sitting in my chair. If you were sitting in my chair every two weeks and nobody got to touch your hair but me, the seven day challenge is literally what I would do for you. That is how you break it down. So the difference between booking a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me and booking the seven doing the seven day challenge a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me you can you can go ahead and read the description for each one right just so you can see the difference but within the seven day challenge you are there with a bunch of different people who are in the same situations that you're in or, or people who have been where you are and when you get to a hiccup or a place that you feel like you don't really know what you're doing or you feel like you're messing up in some way shape or form then it is an amazing group just for you to be a part of right and again i give you patterns and routines that reset your hair growth cycle that reset your skin cell turnover cycle that end up causing sebum flow that you can see and feel right again i need you guys to take a screenshot and go ahead and research all of these hair shaft disorders and what different practices cause these hair shaft disorders and then make sure you look up some pictures of these hair shaft disorders so you can get a better idea and a better picture of what they actually look like i'm not making any of these things up and it is imperative that you guys understand that hair is not something that is like a toy it is a fiber that is growing out of your body a fiber that is made within your gut and the the health of your hair the moisture that your hair has and it is able to retain is simply based on what you put in the body and what you put on the hair shaft the more layers of product you put on the hair shaft the less able your hair is to be able to absorb moisture from the environment 
and then if you put layers of product on your on your hair shaft you come against your hair in two ways your hair is not able to absorb moisture from the environment and the natural sebum that is coming out of your scalp is a waxy substance that will not penetrate the different layers of products that you put on the hair shaft these are things that i want you to think about and moreover if you have protective styles or hair extensions the longer you have a protective style the heavier it is so it goes from you having a protective style where where your hair is not holding any of the weight right to your hair being the thing that is holding the majority of the weight because if you're losing 55 to 155 strands every single day and then you have a weave in your head for four months do the math somebody do the math for me in the comments and so after a while it becomes now your hair is protecting the weave not the weave protecting your hair because your hair now your hair follicle now has the weight of all of those 55 to 155 strands plus all of the dead skin plus all of the products and oils that you put on plus the weft plus all of those hair sh uh, strands that shed and this is weight that a little itty bitty fiber has to hold this is why oil grease all of these different things do not belong on the scalp it seems like they help but they do way more harm than good and i love you guys but this is coming from a woman who's been saying this for over a decade and i got really tired of saying it behind the chair because nobody wanted to listen and I just decided to come and do it from a different angle but we're at a different energy now i feel like you guys are more full of love and more susceptible to being able to open your mind to put the pieces of common sense together for yourself i feel like we're at a place where people are hungry for knowledge and hungry for the direction so i have no problem reposting my older videos to give you guys a visual representation of what i've been saying because i am a visual learner so i feel like it'll be better for me to be a visual teacher if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up make sure you comment below and subscribe i will see you later bye